What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be knocking out probably the last bit of fencing. Uh, we still got to find gates. It's very hard to find 16 foot gates in town. All the tractor supplies don't have them. They're not available for order. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I would ideally like to match the gate. Uh, I don't even know where it's at. Right there at the guest house for the four gates around the property. And then for the front gate where you actually come into like this driveway section of the house, I'm going to probably end up building a custom gate because I feel like it should look a little bit nice. So we've got one more post to set and that is right behind me. I've got my pallet of concrete in the back of the dump truck. i got to get that unloaded. I'm very thankful for the tractor with the forks that has made stuff like this super, super easy. Then once we get this done, we're going to be jumping back on the pool. But we're making the push to get the last little bit of fencing today. And of course we got Papa Rhino parked right in the way. We're going to get real close to his truck. Be able to get the forks into that pallet. Nice and easy now. Nice and easy. Nice and gentle into the pallet. There we go. Good to go. Oh, now he's moving his truck. A little late. A little late. Get our six by six. And in the hole she goes. Holy sh**. Look at all them flies that just came out of there. Look at them all. It's cold. Yeah, a bunch of them. So to keep in plane slash in line with where this fence is, because we strung this all at one shot, we're just running a string line right here and then we will make sure that once we plumb up the six by six, that it works out to be right on the edge of this line. And then we also have to account for, we need a 16 foot opening um, and even with the 16 foot gate they account for the space of the hinges so 16 foot exact opening the gates end up being a little bit smaller um, to account for hinges and all that oh, that ain't gonna work i don't know how we got off on that hole so somehow my measurements got off <laughs> this is of course it's the only one we're filming i don't know what happened we're kind of augering on a slope and it looks like there was a root right here that might have just knocked the auger over a little bit uh, however we need to be about right here so we're gonna dig that out right now. We're gonna use the roto hammer. Again, all the dirt out here is hard. There's not a whole lot you're digging by hand with just using a shovel. So using tools like the roto hammer or like the full size Bosch hammers are pretty paramount for the work that we do. Uh, got us a bucket of water we're going to be just pouring the concrete mix into the hole throwing water on top of it again not my favorite method but it's the fence guy method one thing we're lacking is spigots like way out here i mean we're not way out here we're 75 feet from the house but we're going to be adding spigots along the fence line number one for fire prevention but also convenience for stuff like this we'll have hose bibs available everywhere yeah. Let's stop up it. Pull it. Alrighty, now this section of the fence is done. We still need to trim the six by six posts. We left all of them long because I'm not sure the height of the gate, if I'm gonna end up trimming it. Um, well, I don't know, I guess this one we probably could have just trimmed flush with the actual fence. But like there's certain areas where one side's a little bit higher, the hinge side might be a little bit taller. So we're leaving them long until we actually get our gates here and figure things out. We've got Big Walt over there. He's kind of like right in the middle ground. He likes, really he likes this side of the fence. It's kind of sandy right there. Even though this side is also sandy, this is where he likes to lay down. Hopefully he takes to laying down on this side because well, he's not gonna be able to lay down on that side anymore. Okay, now that the fencing is all wrapped up, we're gonna okay. jump back on the pool. We're gonna be slapping these boards on. These are the pressure treated, the two by eights that are gonna go on the front. 
I picked these up yesterday and uh, laid them up top here so they would lay flat. But after less than 24 hours of being out here, they are all warped like crazy. The sun, the humidity, everything's just kind of no joke right now. But these were really nice ones. <laughs> um, I kind of cherry picked these, but you can see they're really out of whack now. Definitely should have installed them yesterday. And I know a few people have already mentioned it. And if I were to do this different, I would do the deck out of two by six or drop it a little bit lower. I thought I was being slick by cantilevering out over a little bit to kind of like hide the edge of the pool. But we are significantly higher above the edge of the pool. It's not too bad. It's only, it's only eight inches plus probably another five to the water line. So we're 13 inches. It's not horrible. I've already actually gone in just coming off the sides here with no ladder or no steps and it's it's not awkward or difficult. So unfortunately I can only get two by eight by twelves at local Home Depot um, and the pressure treated. They claim they carry 16s but I couldn't find 16s anywhere locally. So it's just gonna be a couple more pieces to put in. And then the plan is as of now the face of this is gonna get the Trex uh, fascia board. It's like a little three-eighths to half inch uh, piece of Trex. We'll slap that up against it so you're not staring at pressure treated like that. We actually put that one in yesterday then we realized you know it's a little bit big it touches the top of the pool right there. I don't want it I don't want any of the weight of the deck sitting on the edge of the pool so we're gonna trim that down. Uh, Papa Rano had my table saw though so we now have the table saw and we can move along. We'll pull that one off mark out where we need it and we'll cut it down. Nope. Yeah, well, we're gonna have to play with it as we go, but hey, jump up here and put a screw in her. We're going down the line here, and we're working on re-straightening this board. What a lot of people you'll see do is they'll put a screw on that end, put a screw on that end, and then go down the middle, and that's not how you get these boards straight. You start at one end, we leave this end loose, and that end is basically our lever. So if the board has kind of got some weird humps and stuff in it, you can actually get those out by, you know, say he's low over there, I could pick up on this side and it would actually bring us higher than where we need to be. But once he screws that, I can then bring this side back down. You'll see right now we're a little bit lower than this joist because that's where he needs to be in the middle there. Cause again, this thing's kind of become a roller coaster. And then as we go down, we adjust using this long end as our lever. so why we don't put a screw in it. And we can adjust as he comes down and we'll get them all to where they flush out at the top of those joists nicely. You can see right now I'm almost three quarters of an inch below this joist, but he flushes out right there. Well, yesterday we ended up getting the entire rim done. And then on this side where I had basically kept it to the edge of the pool, only problem was the pool, something was out of square to the deck. We just opted to recut all of those boards right there and basically get this back to straight with the deck. Now what that means is it cantilevers out over the pool a little bit. I'll show you guys that. I'll we'll just kind of walk over here and try to not fall. So, well, you can see right here we're just a little bit inside of the outer top pole of the pool. And as we work our way down, you can see the pool. Well, and then we got Willie over here doing somersaults. Um, you can see the pool is back past the edge. Now again, the reason we did that is something got out of square from the deck to the pool. We were trying to square up to a pool that was all kinds of folded in and really the pool still moves. Um, I put an extra inch of water in it from where we had it and the sides straightened out even more just from an inch more water. The reason we decided to do it this way instead of keeping it to the edge of the pool is this is the main line that you see from the house. So if you look out from our kitchen, our dining room or anything like that, you see this weird cockeyedness. And we've been staring at it for like four or five days now. Oh yeah, yeah, Papa Rano didn't like it. He said, we got to change it. So I'll show you guys from back here, sight line wise, and you can't even see the water of the pool anyway, or the edge of the pool, but you can see that just looks nicer and straighter than it used to be kind of cockeyed this way. Uh, I think once we would have put the decking on, you wouldn't have seen it as much because right now you're staring at all this framing that's parallel to each other. At this point, I'm glad we did it. Uh, I had to recut a lot of stuff, but in the end, I'm happier. It looks better. And we'll just have a, we'll call it like a six inch grotto. You know, we're just really amping up the luxury on this thing. We got a grotto now. Over here, you see some four bys sticking up. 
Now, what I wanted to do was some patio covers somewhere on here. I mean, we're out just fully exposed in the blazing hot sun, which is great for warm water because I love warm water, but a little bit of shade will be nice. Now, the only issue I'm running into over here is when we concreted our four by fours into the ground, you can see all these exterior ones are concreted in. The interior ones are sitting on those pier blocks and that kind of annoys my eye. So we're like, these things aren't every eight feet or like they don't hit on the corners of the pool. They're kind of in. This one's in like, I don't know, three or four feet from the corner of the pool. This side is in similarly. If we had more laid out better, I would probably offer some more 4x4s coming up. But I think we're only going to be able to use these two like structurally because I want to I want to bolt into the side of these 4x4s that are in the concrete. That way these things are strong. If they're going to be quite as tall as they are right now. This is probably oh, 10 feet or so. And these are going to cantilever out a patio cover. It's only we're talking 4 to 5 feet of cantilever. Uh, but I think it'll be a cool little addition and not make it look, look like a boring flat deck. We'll add a little bit of height and a little dimension. Now, I wish I could have found uh, pressure treated 4x4s in a longer length because then we could have left them sticking up and that could have been the post for our railing system. Unfortunately, the longest I could find uh, were 10s. So Chava's going around and cutting all of the 4x4s flush with the deck and then we'll worry about a railing system later. Now we're gonna set the height of our four x four post. And to do that, I think I'm just gonna shoot for, I think eight foot tall is enough. Um, I'm gonna tap these in. Again, they're mating up alongside this four x four that is anchored in concrete. And then we've got these structural screws. These big old monsters is how we're going to bolt it together. We're gonna to be standing on this little step stool booger. Hopefully not too sketchy. We're just gonna, a uh, little sketchy, a little sketchy. I've done worse. We're just gonna tap her down until we get to eight feet. There we go. Or maybe we should go to nine feet. Then we only gotta come down an inch. How much meat we got on there? Eh, we should probably go to eight. And don't worry, these tops aren't gonna be seen. Otherwise I'd put a board on there so I wouldn't beat it up. Ooh, still got a long ways to go. Up top. It's a little bit overhead right now. Just a little bit. A little bit of a reach. Or I use a man sized sledge. Try and get down faster. So I got to thinking, you know what sounds better than eight foot when you're having to hammer things overhead? Eight foot six. So uh, we went with eight foot six. I didn't have to pound them another six inches down, but. One of the benefits of really taking the time to make sure that we have the posts down below plumb is as you're working further and further along on the project, like it's going to come back to save you. So this is literally perfectly mated to the four by down below. And you can see she is dang near perfectly plumb. The reason that's important is you can't really adjust it because then you're going to have a gap in between the four by fours. And I want them to be nice and tight to each other when we screw them in. Structural screws are going in a little hard to see, but we are up in there. Oh, 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 pay attention. I'm gonna do three per from four by to four by. These things are rated to hold 1200 and something pounds each. Whereas typically there's nails and there's screws, right? Obviously nails, bend, screws, break. Uh, I know a lot of people freaked out when we were using screws to put these boards on to attach to our four bys. But the reason we use screws is so if something gets out of whack, we can adjust it. Then I came back with nails and shot a bunch of nails in and I'm also going to put into these structural screws just so we have a little extra support, but I think this thing's gonna be rated to hold quite a bit once we're done with it. Well, I ended up losing the T30 bit that I was using. I didn't have a bit driver close by, so I've just been using a quarter inch bit on the impact, which the bit doesn't really sit well into, the bit that came with these uh, structural screws. So it flies off every once in a while and I wasn't paying attention and it flew off and I lost it. Um, a lot of you guys have asked about the Harbor Freight tools and why I'm not using them. Those are actually at my shop. Uh, I brought them down there for a project. I just haven't brought them back out to the ranch. I love those things. They're great. And I'm not just saying that as a marketing ploy. I don't get paid by Harbor Freight. This is probably going to sound like a marketing ploy when I tell you what we're going to do to try and find the bit that I lost. But we're actually going to use the Harbor Freight Gordon metal detector. We've actually been playing around with this a bunch at the ranch. Let's we'll see if we can find our bit. The bit is tiny. Oh, oh maybe, maybe, maybe. 
We got some metal there. Alperino loves this thing. He's been running around the ranch with it, looking for some some relics. Saco lo de metro, porque de metro es feria. Maybe aquí. Ahí está. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Oh, papi. Maybe it's one of staple. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm a moron. So we use these. Yeah, we use these metal staples to hold down this weed barrier. <laughs> I'm an idiot. We're, we're chasing in the soft sand. All right. Well, there's only so many of those in this middle section, so this would still work. So this thing's got two modes, right? You got your like normal scanning mode, and then it's got pinpoint. So pinpoint is when you hear it, kind of giving you an audible sound that you're getting close. So when we're doing our regular scanning, we just leave it in regular mode and it'll just make a noise. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Oh, oh, no, that might be another staple. Two blaze little staple. See. All I know is I'm never taking Chava on a uh, treasure hunt. We're looking for something on the surface and this man is just disturbing the crap out of the surface, kicking it around. We've managed to find all kinds of other stuff. We haven't found the bit yet. I'll be damned guys, look at that. We actually ended up finding the bit right here. Woo! This thing freaking worked. Got all kinds of different modes, you know, if you're finding money, gold, a nickel, nails, whatever, bottle caps, steel, tells you silver, all kinds of different things. Hopefully you guys can see the screen on there, but the thing actually just saved the day because I don't know if I have another T30 bit around the house anywhere. I was starting to have my doubts for a second. All we were finding were staples and screws, but I knew she was here. I knew she was here. Thank you, Harbor Freight, for sending this out to me. This thing actually worked great. I went ahead and made a quick run to Home Depot while Chava kind of finished up uh, screwing off some stuff today. The day is kind of winding down, but I really want to get going on this patio cover pergola style, whatever the heck we're building over there. And again, my brain kind of works in the like, as I'm building it, I'm coming up with ideas and changing things. Now that I come and look at it, I bought some 10 foot two by fours. I need to get 12. So we're not going to get too, too far today. But you'll notice out here, if you let wood sit for more than a day, once you bring it from the depot, uh, it gets all kinds of wonky. Now this did not come from Home Depot. This piece of like three eighths has been in the back of my truck for a while. However, it was flat this morning and by like noon, it was looking like a crispy piece of bacon. The humidity and the heat has just been absolutely brutal and ruining any lumber that I bring out. And for framing stuff like that, we can straighten it pretty good. But for doing like a pergola, it's, it's, you want nicer pieces of wood. Now I'm gonna do little decorative ends. This is actually gonna be very similar to the one that I built at my old house, which is still standing by the way, and looking great. You can do whatever kind of end, end detail you wanna do. I just took a bucket. Gave me a radius, but obviously you can see how the bucket starts to kind of come back down. I don't want this to be like a saber tooth where it actually has like a hook on it. So basically at the highest point of where the bucket was, I just took my square and went straight from there. So you can kind of see it's a little bit of a difference. The bucket kind of wanted to swoop in. I don't want it to be swooped like that. I want it to be a nice straight shot. And then we just use the Milwaukee cordless jigsaw to cut it out. I'll come in with a sander or probably just a piece of sandpaper and just round over those edges so they aren't sharp edges because sharp edges want to split more. It's better to round them over like the factory does right there. And then all we got to do is line this up on the other ones. We'll mark them and then they'll all be pretty consistent. Got four of these made and that's basically what it's going to take. We're going to do one on each side of those four by fours. These are long. These are eight footers. My original plan was to go a little bit shorter. However, I want them to go over the edge of the pool, like over top of the pool because I have a water feature idea that I might be adding at some point. I'm not sure. It's probably a horrible idea. I want the ability to do it. So we're going to find out right now though, if these four by fours, like it's going to be a decent amount of weight on this like lever that we're building over there. I uh, did something similar at my old house and it held great. This one may or may not. I don't know. We might have to shrink these down significantly. I'm going to get us a rough measurement right there. We are sticking out. Let's see. We're about 20 inches over the pool. And then we are running past these posts. Uh, what is that? 14 inches, Ooh, almost 14 on the dot. We can bring it back just a little bit more. Having some hanging out here is going to give us a little bit of counterweight. Not much, but a little bit. Let's just go with an even 14 and we'll call that good. Did I remember a pencil? 
I did not remember a pencil. I can't wait till we actually have decking on here. It's getting so old walking across this. Now these are definitely not gonna be fun doing solo, but gotta do what you gotta do. Get at least one screw started. Now well, we'll start two screws. Here goes nothing. Oh, if I was a little bit taller, this will work out well. Okay guys, we're gonna work smarter, not harder. This is gonna be impossible to hold in place. So we're gonna put a board up here. We we'll screw a board on, this will sit on top of that. Oh, and this bit is stripped. Had to take a quick break to feed these big old wild beasts. And then look at this, how bougie is this? And the freaking peacock. The peacock's got her own little stainless steel dish to eat out of. You are such a bougie peacock. Stop pooping on my patio. I mean, I know I feed you here, that's why you come here and you poop on my patio, but I mean, you gotta eat. Okay, fresh bit, fresh Milwaukee bit holder that I probably should've grabbed earlier so we weren't losing the T30 bit off of those big structural screws. Let's try this again. This is still gonna be such an offhand thing. Put a second screw in even though we know we're not level. I don't even know if it'll stay with those two. Woo. Barely. Now we are gonna be putting another brace right here at a 45 that's gonna tie in somewhere up here. But let's take a little step back and see, see how this is looking. Again, this is how my brain works. You gotta kind of put something in place, take a look at it, and see if I like it or not. I kinda like it. At one point I thought about going down this entire side, but I think that's just gonna be too much. I think we'll just keep it to here. Now again, I bought 10 foot two by fours that we're gonna go across this, but they're only gonna stick out like a foot and a foot on each side. So I think what I'm gonna do is go 12 foot two by fours across this. So we'll have two foot of patio cover overhanging on each side. So essentially it'll be a 12 foot little patio cover pergola. I don't know, there's probably a million different names for whatever we're doing here. But with this, again, we're not level, we're cocked it down a little bit, but I can use this to get my measurement for my 45 degree braces. <laughs> that once that's without the structural screws in I'm not gonna do that again now should this dumb idea of mine fail we can do it out of metal we probably should have done it out of metal but I want to give wood a shot I feel like you know it just kind of feels like it fits this place a little bit more We're doing it out of wood versus just a straight you know L piece out of metal second one is up and I don't know y'all I don't think we're gonna be able to handle the weight cantilevered out this far we could probably dial it back in just a little bit um, and send more that way or just lop these off. A little bit nervous because right now, sure, it's fine. We start adding the two two by fours on top and then all of the two by threes going down this way at, you know, one foot intervals or 10 inch intervals, eight inch intervals. I mean, it's going to start adding up quick weight wise up top. It should go the full length for a better look, but we already struggling with these two and these two are anchored in concrete maybe we should have just done six by sixes but i can't get them down in maybe we just do what a lot of people do and they take this horizontal piece and instead of going level they'll pitch it up and that way you can handle a little bit more weight and if it sags you can't really tell because it was never supposed to be level it's just a little cheating trick there that some people use but either way look at the beautiful sunset we got going on at the ranch looks great with the pool the pool ends up in the shade uh probably about 6 30 from those trees right there this isn't necessarily for shade um it will be a little bit of shade in the morning we could build another one over there which will give you shade by about four o'clock i just think it's architecturally going to be better than just a boring flat deck this is starting to become one of those way too many trips to home depot projects and i don't live close to a home depot anymore so it's becoming very time consuming that's why you see so many different t-shirts in this video because we stopped recording quite a few days, but got some changes. Let me show you. Now, in thinking of ways to stiffen everything up, I decided to wrap them in some two by sixes. I was actually gonna wrap the entire thing and basically bulk this out to make it look like it was a six by six. However, I kind of like the look of leaving the centers open. Kind of matches the openness of the two by sixes running across the top. Then I also put in some more bracing down below 
which is that board going there to hopefully keep this entire thing from wanting to twist or rack. The other side, I put in some blocking similar to this. This blocking was already in. I don't think there's really a point in putting blocking right in the center of this. I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. The other side didn't have any blocking, so I went and put some in, but she is significantly stiffer than she was. Now I'm gonna make some design changes up top as well. Originally I was going to run a, well, let me just let me just set them up there so it makes sense. You've also got the coyote over. It's about as far as she can reach. We're gonna be standing on this pallet to do some work because uh, we need a little bit extra height. She's pretty tall. Probably the absolute sketchiest pallet to use for this. Look at, they just literally took little 14, 15 inch pieces and nailed them in. They're not even full pieces. And uh, this could go in any minute. You can see they already have at some point. So again, my original plan was we were gonna take two, uh, two by four by 12s, like this. There'll be one in the front, one in the back. And then this way, we're gonna run a bunch of two by threes. How many? I don't know. If we do them every foot, that's kind of big spacing. It's maybe every 10 inches. And I feel like that might be heavier than if we were just to run two by fours this way, or really we could do them that way. I'm not a big fan of doing stuff like this because I feel like it warps more when you do it flat like that, but it'll give you a little more shade. So I don't know without doing the math what's heavier, but they would end up being full length, eight foot, two by threes this away. I just don't know. I don't know what the right answer is, but let's see. Let's bring this all the way out to the edge. All right, something like that. A little bit closer. All right, we'll call that good here. I got three of these to test with. I do have a bunch of two by threes that I bought by eight footers. And then obviously once these are locked together, this won't move as much once we tie everything together. I mean, it's gonna move a little bit, but you know what? Ain't nobody standing up here. So I have three of these. I've got two 10 footers. I'm just gonna put those up just for looks, but I think this actually might not be too bad. It doesn't feel like it's too much weight cantilevering over the edge. We might just, might just do it this way. Now, obviously these are different lengths, but this is just to give me an idea what we're working with. If this is really the look that I want to go for. Let's hop down and take a look. Alrighty, well, honestly, I don't hate it. It's not quite as ornate as I, I would have liked going this way, but if it's gonna save us the risk of this thing getting too wonky by having too much weight on it, obviously that's as much weight as it's gonna have. Anything from about that 45 degree brace back isn't really gonna cause it to lean forward. And then obviously, I mean, we could add a couple more and kind of tighten the spacing up a little bit, which is probably what I'll end up doing. But at least we alleviated the issue of this thing wanting to fall down into the pool. We'll see, we get 100 mile an hour winds out here. We'll see if this holds up. I don't think it's too big of a wind catch that it's gonna make it do really weird things, but who the heck knows? I'll probably end up putting a four by in the middle at like railing height and we'll tie everything together. So it'll have a little more rigidity down at the bottom when we run railing. However, we're gonna do the railing. Haven't really figured that out yet. I just fell through. Thankfully, we were on the shortest spot, so I went straight to the ground. Jeez. All right, I want to wrap up this video. We've gone on too long. Uh, I think this is going to be a cool little feature. I'll probably end up doing one on the opposite side just so they match, and it gives us a place to string some string lights in between, which I know is also going to put a little bit of tension and some weight on it. But I think the string lights will be cool, It'll give a nice party vibe to the pool and all that. If we ever have a party out here, we want to have a band on the deck. Uh, I think it'll be pretty sweet. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this this video a like get a thumbs up don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life you got to be willing to work for it you guys are the best i'm out damn uh. yeah uh. yeah uh. yeah